big chunk of weed. Nice fish though. I see him there. Definitely a keeper. Might get him in. I'm a mess, I know. <laughs> 900 pounds of weeds there. <sighs> there we go. Nice keep of trout though, wow. What a beautiful fish. He crushed that, he crushed that uh, Tui Chub olive pattern fly. Look at that fish. There we go. Man, is Lake Davis back or what? Look at that fly. He just crushed that, uh, that Tuicha pattern fly. Man, he was instantly into the drag. Not a huge fish, but uh, definitely a, a nice square tail. Um, orange meat, I guarantee it. What a fight, what an incredible trout. So we will uh, we'll be keeping that one for the smoker. That's what I'm looking for. I want five of those today. Look at those big beautiful rainbows. That's what trolling flies can do. You think trolling flies don't work? Well, think again. You need to grab a set of my trolling flies, get out on the water, and get ready to go big. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Howdy folks, Cal Kellogg here. I've got a couple new kinks for you guys on an old tried and true technique. Um, in the beginning of this video, you saw me catch a nice trout on a trolling fly. And if you watch the channel much, you know I catch a lot of nice trout on trolling flies. I catch some monsters on trolling flies. But uh, while well, I just started, you know, trolling flies seriously a few years ago, I've been fishing flies for decades. In fact, I spent about 10 years fishing exclusively with fly fishing gear. And then after that, I started teaming flies with conventional gear up at Hat Creek while I was still in my, you know, teens early 20s I would use a spinning rod I would put split shot on the line for weight I would pin on a fly I would cast it across the current I would manipulate it with the rod tip as it swung through the current then I would let it hang below me manipulate it some more and I caught a ton of fish doing that um, as time went by though I started to get more sophisticated. I started using water bobbers in lakes that enabled me to fill a, a bobber up with a lot of water, weigh about an ounce probably, put a fly on there, cast it really far, and then work it back to me. That is a great technique, but it also has a limitation that you're, you're only gonna be fishing near the surface. If you completely fill the bobber with water, you can count it down a little bit, but by and large, you're gonna be fishing near the surface. So. I started adding, you know, weight in more sophisticated ways to my line, primarily using a, a modified Carolina rig where I take my main line down through a bullet weight, add a bead, tie on a swivel, tie on a leader, and then tip it with a fly. It could be a big streamer all the way down to a small nymph. And that allowed me to work deeper in the water column at a lake, count a fly down much the same way as I would a spoon when I was out fan casting a spoon. And I could also use it in a stream like Hat Creek or the Middle American for my swing technique. Cast it across the current, let it swing, give it some manipulation, and then let it hang below me, give it some more manipulation, reel it in and cast again. For years, that's how I casted flies. Water bobbers and bullet weights. That was pretty much my whole repertoire. Well, since I'm, I'm kind of sequestered at home here right now and I'm not really fishing, I've been playing with tackle and looking at some different stuff and I came up with something that I think is going to be super effective and I wanted to share it with you guys. A few weeks ago, you probably remember this if you're one of my avid viewers, I showed you these trolling weights that I got on Amazon. They come in various sizes and they're unique. They have a swivel at either end of the weight and you could tie these right in your line and uh, use them for trolling to get down to various depths. Well, I thought, why not use that to replace that bullet weight you've been using when casting flies? That's just what I've done here. I've got my main line tied to one end of the weight. I've got some 10 pound fluorocarbon about 30 inches tied to the other end. And this comes down to a wiggle disc and a number four 
black beadhead woolly booger. Now, the addition of the disc is new to me. Um, the weight's new, but the addition of the disc is very new to me. I use them, you know, for trolling and I swear by them, but I've never used them when casting flies. And uh, I think this is a real game changer. Obviously, in a lake, I'm gonna be able to cast this out, count it down, and then slow roll it back in. I'm gonna get the same vibration and action on the fly that I get when I'm trolling. In the past, you know, without the wiggle disc, I'd have to add all the action with the rod tip. And uh, I think that's just a, that that's a game changer. It's gonna allow me to just roll that in, speed it up, slow it down. I'm gonna have a lot of action. And it's already a presentation that I know trout respond to because I catch so many trout trolling flies just like that. In the streams, like in the Middle American, it's a big, deep stream. And I'm really looking forward to using that with my cast across the current and swing technique. That, that is gonna, uh-oh, nope, I was tangled just for a second that time. Um, that disc is gonna work against the current as that fly swings. I'm not gonna have to impart any action with the rod tip and because the current isn't steady, at certain times it's gonna be vibrating and wiggling like crazy and it's gonna hit a little lull in the current and the fly is gonna go dead and then it's gonna start dancing again. The same is true when it gets to the end of the drift and the fly is hanging you know, directly below me, the current, you know, it pauses and it surges and that is gonna be reflected in that fly. It's gonna be vibrating like crazy and then the fly is gonna kinda it's gonna kinda you know, tail off and sink a little bit and then it's gonna come back up. It's gonna be vibrating like crazy as the current works against that disc. And I am super, super excited about this approach. I know it's gonna produce fish and I think it's gonna, it's gonna produce fish very well, both in lakes and in streams. So I just thought I'd share that with you guys. Remember, experimentation, experimentation, experimentation. That's how we come up with new approaches and new techniques. And it doesn't have to be, you know, this big global change. You don't have to say, you know what, I'm gonna go to the middle American and I'm gonna throw nine inch plastic worms like they use for bass and I'm gonna kill the fish on them. Sometimes the little tweaks are subtle, but the results, you know, the change in results can be extreme. So. My plan is I'm going to utilize those trolling weights in a unique way and I'm also going to utilize the wiggle discs for casting and for fishing moving water and those two subtle little changes there I think they're going to make me even more effective out on the water and uh, I can't wait to get started. As soon as, this, as soon as this shutdown is over, the trout season should be open and I'm gonna take this rig down on the middle of the American and see if it works. I know it's gonna work. I wanna see how well it's gonna work. Anyway, food for thought, guys. A new approach to, a, to an old dog. You can teach an old dog new tricks, kinda. Um, teaming wiggle discs and trolling weights with flies for casting in both lakes and streams. Give it a try. Let me know how you do. If you've got some little tweaks and, and secret tips that you use you know, with your gear, put them in the comments below. I wanna hear about it. I would've never known about the slow death hooks for fishing worms if it wasn't for you guys. I'd never heard of them in my life. I did a video about fishing threaded crawlers and all of a sudden one of the guys says, man, Kel, you gotta be using these hooks. I used them. And uh, honestly, now I won't go trout trolling without them. So if you got some little tips, techniques, tweaks, you know, ways to make that dog hunt better, put it in the comments below. I'm interested to see what you guys got to say. If you're looking for trout gear, go on over to the Fish Hunt Shoe Production store. Check out my gear, all my rods and spoons and all that stuff's in there. The stuff you see me using on the channel, great gear at a fair price. And uh, please take a second to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell, man. We are over 3 million views, almost to 11,000 subscribers. And uh, we want to thank you sincerely for all the support you've given the channel over the years. Thanks a lot, guys. Stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you next time right here on YouTube.